Hello guys and welcome again for another standard deck tech for states of new campaign standard and today's deck tech we have another uh, deck strategy what we can categorize as uh, a built around deck with the colors of uh, Naya or Cabaretti for the new families in Capena in which they have maybe you can we can call it the core uh, core card in the deck uh, this is the card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Since we call it this, the Bard class. I mean, a Bard class. So the Bard class is a rare, one green, one red uh, enchantment uh, uh, type for um, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, in which having ability of uh, enjoy creatures to control enters the battlefield with an additional percent percent counter on them. Then when you pay one red and green for level two legendary spells, you cast cost one red or and green mana less to cast, and this effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you play. And after you get into level three, in which you're going to pay five in total, whenever you cast a legendary spell, you sell the top card of your library and then we play them this turn. So in this effect, it goes the benefit of having more legendary creatures in your deck to give them this buff this free buff from this enchantment so having four copies in this in the main deck along with other legendary creatures from the format so let us uh, uh, check on them uh, one by one by card when we start off with Tagnar Demon Fang uh, Demon Fang Null from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms it is a 2 drop for 2 uh, two two with a pack tactics of if you attack with the uh, creatures with total power six or more during combat, attack creatures gets plus one percent until end of turn. Then you can have this ability of a uh, double striking. Uh, it's not double strike, but it will double power and toughness of Targner's uh, stat until end of turn. So three copies of this. Then we have also three copies of Genie Fey from system your capena so it will turn any tokens you control you created into a 2-2 green cut haste or a 3-1 green dog creature with vigilance so and any choice given if needed for certain situations you can choose uh, out of the two options for its uh, tokens generated so along with this we also have uh, a legendary creature for a uh, tutsi the four drop for uh, Kamigawa in Dynasty, the Dragon uh, Legendary Creature, Dragon Spirit. So it has this ability of having not only having a 4-4 attacker in itself, but also uh, die triggers within you can uh, excel the top two cards of the library and having them to play at the end of your next turn. And then you can also have the option of creating three treasure tokens out of uh, whenever it dies. So 4 drop 4 4 uh, and flying is also a good attacker in itself given that if you have bard cast it will become a 4 4 4 creature with 100% counter so basically a 5 5 flying trample creature then along with it we have uh, Halana and Alena partners this is a st staple comp component for red green aggro it also became a 4 draft here with her ability of having counters on another target creature control and giving them haste so according to it, you can basically have it uh, with the class a uh, 3-4 and then have its trigger put out 3% uh, counters on another third creature with addition of 1 from the bonus of uh, the bard class. Then we have a new card from Streets. We have Jetmir, the cat demon, the sort of the head of the family of the Cabaretti. So they have its 3 abilities wherein for any number of uh, creatures you control gets plus 1 for 3 or more, 6 or more, and 9 or more creatures so three to, uh, 4 to cast 5, 4 uh, basically at the least ability it can become vigilance on its own so basically also a good addition for a 4 drop and having that uh, we can par partner for uh, Gala Glitters which is sort of a 2 drop which uh, benefits uh, enter battlefield with the alliance ability wherein 
whenever uh, Kicho enters the battlefield under your control, you can choose one that has been chosen, either having counter on it, uh, creating a tap to your token, which basically you can wrap into your four drops uh, on the next turn, or you can just gain two life in the process of just having extra life donors if needed for a damage race, for example. So along with it, we have uh, several uh, artifact creatures, uh, artifacts, uh, vehicles, and uh, also Prince Walker for Arlene Pax Hope. So Isika's Chariot is also uh, auto inclusion here because of its power being a card advantage uh, and board advantage uh, generator. So if you partnered with uh, Jennifer, you can have basically creating more than just two to cut features and having more tokens when it reverted attacks and for lantern flare uh, just basically just dealing x damage when you have cleave cost where in x is the number of creatures you control and uh, having dealing damage uh, creature imprints occur and also gains you x life whenever it uh, uh, deals with its damage and we have Arlene, uh, basically a 4 drop for having to produce 2 two, 2 green wolf creature tokens by its minus 3 but at the same time we can also have the plus 1 ability in which you can cast creature spells though you had flash then each creature you control in the battlefield had an uh, additional plus 1 plus counter it, it has a night bound uh, ability though wherein you can produce mana and Maybe use it to ramp up for your best creature or your needed X damage spells if uh, possible. And then we have Benny Announcement. It says uh, so do ramp uh, token generator and when if stability uh, anthem effect at the same time and also a card draw depending on situations and how you would put out the invitation counter on this enchantment. And last but not the least in the main deck we have a rubber rousing. Hideaway enchantment for 5, but it has uh, cost 5 that whenever you attack one or more creatures, okay, that many green and white citizen creature tokens, then if you control 10 or more creatures, you may play the excel card from the hideaway without paying its mana cost. It's quite uh, uh, grinding on its value because of its 5 mana cost, but given that uh, if you attack uh, Two, then you get two one one green tokens, three then three one one green white. Then but when if you combo it with Jennifer, you can create three one dog tokens or two two cat uh, hasty cat tokens instead of this uh, usual one one citizens. So the card distribution for the lands is the basic uh, combination of pathways. We have Jetmesh Garden of course as the main. Uh, land fixing because of the three mana combination and we have some man lands in the form of then of the bugbear and also a token generator for second sun which you can have two plus and plus one spirit creature tokens we have uh, bosiju for the utility of destroying artifacts enchantments also in Ganju for combat damage tricks as needed so the main deck consists uh, basically of no uh, no, basic lands in its combination which is just actually fine as for aggro deck that's we can have uh, many fixing as possible for the sideboard we have mostly white creature white cards as they included by the deck uh, creator uh, we have march of Barger worldly light as a sort of removal again for exiling artifact creature enchantment and we also have two copies of it then we have three valorous stance, a sort of removal and protection for your creature at the same time, giving them acceptable indestructible if needed for board wipes. And we have uh, this one is the Garden of Fate. This is a Tito cast uh, spirit from Adventures of Forgotten Realms. It has flash and vigilance, so when it enters the battlefield, any number of other target creature control faces out so at the same time you can basically save them from uh, mass removal if needed and we have right then god of the worthy in where you're in having snowlands your opponent controls your battlefield tap which uh, basically delays them for its mana 
and non-creature spells the cast uh, cost uh, two more to cast in this effect and if needed you can also switch it to Valkyra Protector's Shield wherein an opponent uh, damage source uh, prevent is prevented by one and whenever an permanent control or you becomes a target of a spell or ability it, it will be countered unless its controller pays one so this has uh, variants of two copies when we have one ring of war, no other explanation needed for it so it's volatility creature and token generator then we have Elspeth Splendid as a new addition for this uh, cabaret deck where you can put out the consumers counters and uh, adding flying first strike lifelink or vigilance according to the need to those creature and then having to minus three looking looking up at top seven or library then you put a permanent a card with mana value two or less from among them into the battlefield with a person person uh, with a shield counter and putting the rest in the bottom random order as needed and then last but not the least we have a minus seven wherein you can create five three three white angel creature tokens with flying as it ultimate loyalty ability which also includes to generate more tokens in addition to combo with the uh, jet mirror or any other uh, uh, creature benefits of the main deck. So two copies of it in the sideboard. You can just combine how the displaced walker would be needed according to your matchups. If you can go wide or go long game, if uh, that is the best strategy if possible. Then last but not the least, we have Kura, the Boundless Sky, which is the five to cast four for flying death touch Dragon spirit. It has the dice trigger of searching for three lands, putting it in the hand, which you can basically searching for any of these utility creatures, I mean utility lands, or maybe just go for the mana land in itself as an added, uh, um, added uh, threat to your board. And then you can also create an X, X green switch tokens where it's X the number of lands you control. So basically, it can basically replace itself. And also a good attacking uh, five drop for four in the air with the uh, evasion and also death touch if needed to trade with other large relevant creatures of the opponents. So overall, it uh, is a good uh, deck to uh, include if you want to play it for uh, maybe I just grinding for MTG Arena or MTG Online. Uh, if you can see in the lineup, it make. Um, second place in a local tournament in game day in Hurria, Japan in which I know that most of these Japanese are very attentive in building uh, creating this uh, awesome uh, deck deck text and perhaps um, having ideas out of uh, maybe just having to go with just traditional token decks or maybe just aggro decks in the lineup so to start with up this video uh, I do hope you like this uh, uh, standard deck discussion again with the we we might be just using some old cards from few sets, but uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that was uh, we able to appreciate and utilize these cards even if we have new from streets of New Capena. So wrapping up this video, we gonna hope you would uh, like and subscribe if you like this part and for more uh, upcoming uh, standard deck tech, just stay tuned by uh, subscribing to my channel and. That's about it uh, until the next recording.